Hi there. My name's Nick, and I'm the son of a fourth-generation farmer. I say that because I'm the first in my dad's family to not be one. It's not really my choice. Sometimes, I think life would be much simpler if I just followed in my dad's footsteps. It just so happened that I'm the first on our family to go to high school. I remember when I was four years old, Mom read me a book about elves and orcs and men, and I fell in love with stories from that moment on. I wrote a lot. As early as six, I was writing short stories, and my teachers made me write essays that they'd enter in competitions. It's why I ended up getting a full scholarship in a fancy high school in the first place. One of those essays caught the attention of the principal of Aspen Grove High. I didn't win the writing competition, but Mr. Bellows called my parents the next day, told them I had great potential, and convinced them to send me to the city to study. Thanks to Mr. Bellows, I was given a place in the school, and I didn't have to pay no tuition. The school even gave me a stipend to spend on whatever I needed each month. But even then, it was enough to cover rent and food, and sometimes I had to take the bus or the train when it rained because I didn't want to get to school soaking wet. I got a job at Delhi. They paid okay. Only the boss is really strict and he's always breathing down my neck. If I so much as cut a piece of ham even a hair too thick, he made me throw it in the trash. He deducted it from my pay. Plus, the city's not all that great either. The moment I stepped out of that bus, I felt like going back to live in the farm. People were rude. They were always rushing to something. And when I would try to soak in the sun or look at a beautiful garden for the shortest of moments, one, two, three people would just bump into me and get mad. And they wouldn't even say sorry. The kids at school were no better. They were all rich and privileged. And so they expected the world from others around them. And they judged those who didn't belong to the same club. Class, I'd like you to meet the new addition to our pool of excellent learners. Welcome to the class, Mr. Nick Bower. The entire class clapped. They all smiled. But as soon as the teacher turned her back, their true colors showed. They sneered at me, looked me up and down and judged my old, unfashionable clothes. They knew instantly I wasn't one of them. At lunch, no one would sit with me. They ostracized me. Except for when one or two particularly nasty ones would give me drive-by insults just to hammer the point home. Why are you even here? You don't belong here, pleb. Yeah, go back to whatever backwater ditch you came from, hillbilly. I stopped eating at the calf after that. Every lunchtime, I'd climb up four floors and I'd eat at the gym's rooftop. Uh, But one day, someone else was there, and she was standing at the very edge of the roof. And something horrible crossed my mind. I ran towards her and yelled, It's not worth it! Step off the ledge! I grabbed her by the waist and pulled her off the ledge. But in the heat of the moment, I I lost my balance, and we tumbled further back than I'd planned. I ended up on my back, and she ended up on top of me. She blushed, and I started stammering. What do you think you're doing? Uh, 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 Well, it's only the the fourth floor. Uh, I I thought... uh, uh, well, the worst that could happen is you hurt your legs, and 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 that's... Oh my god, are you dumb? I was just trying to get good signal. I was on the phone with my lawyers, and this stupid school had so many tall trees, I could barely get reception. Wait. Speaking of my phone, did you see where... Oh. Oh no. No, 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 no. Do you have any idea how much this thing cost? This is a custom y 14 Pro Max Plus Ultra. It's literally coated in gold and diamonds. And look what you've done! Put it in a bag of rice? <sighs> You're paying for this. I took my phone out and boogled how much it would cost. And my face went white. I don't have a grand and a half to pay for that. (laughs) Are you serious?
serious? That's for the regular iPhone 14 Pro Max Plus Ultra that no money plebs like you own. This is custom. It's worth 50000 I couldn't even begin to understand what kind of job I'd have to do to earn that much. That's like 25 cows. And Dad sure ain't gonna let me sell Bessie and Coda. I... I I don't have any money. I make, like, four shifts at the deli, and, uh, and I make 200 bucks a week. You're not getting out of this just because you're poor. You're gonna work for me for an entire year, and you will do whatever I say. I'll do whatever you want. Just, please, don't get me expelled. Rory made me her personal servant. She made me fetch her coffee, do her homework. She'd even make me answer her DMs when she didn't feel like it. She had lots of admirers, and she was quite popular. Some days I had to answer a thousand DMs. But Rory didn't want her followers seeing her being followed around by some guy dressed in farmer's clothes, so she took me to a tailor and had them make clothes just for me. And... I started looking like one of those guys that move in the same social circles as she did. Now, whenever I walked around with Rory, heads turned. And not in the same way they did before. I may have looked like a million bucks, but Rory used me to carry her around my back when she didn't feel like walking. She made me carry her over puddles or into cafes. She made me carry her purse when she was shopping, fan her when she felt warm, and she even made me exact revenge on her enemies when she couldn't be bothered to do it herself. When she wanted me to drive her around town to look for the best ramen, and she found out I didn't have my own car, she took me to a dealership and told me I could pick whichever car I wanted. I saw a Honda and stood beside it. Th- this one? Do you want me to look like a pleb? Uh, how about this one? I am not a farmer's wife. Rory pointed to a car that I didn't even consider an option. And that's how I ended up owning a G-Wagon. Rory was kind enough to let me continue working. Otherwise, I'd starve. And I wouldn't be able to repay her for her phone. My boss at the deli was noticing how much I'd changed, though. He saw me driving a nice car, wearing nicer clothes even acting like I'm some slick city boy. And I guess he liked all that, so he suddenly brought his daughters into work one day and introduced me to them. They were triplets, Mary, Josie, and Hope. And when he saw that the triplets were crushing on me, he took me aside. You know, son, you're a hard worker. It doesn't matter that you grew up in a farm. I think you have potential. You have a good attitude. I know I've been hard on you lately, but that's because I believe in you! And now, I also believe you're right for my daughters. Uh, so, sir? D- did I stutter? Mary, Josie, and Hope like you a lot. And I'll do anything to get my daughters what they want! I was under immense pressure. I didn't want to lose my job. Because if I did, I'd lose my scholarship. And I'll never finish high school. So I juggled my responsibilities with school, being Rory's servant, and going on dates with the triplets. But then, those worlds collided. While having a school festival, the school that the triplets went to visited my school in a friendly cricket tournament, and the triplets were there to cheer on their team. They saw me and immediately latched onto me. Get your filthy hands away from my neck! I I I mean, my my servant! Excuse me? And who are you? He's our boyfriend. Yeah, you back off. Rory was mad. The triplets were equally furious when they found out I was hanging out with some girl all the time. They made me choose. But I I couldn't. And so the triplets waited for me to get to bed that night and made that choice for me. They tied me up and carried me to their car. And when I woke up, I was in a church. There were birds singing and my boss was sitting in the pews looking happy as a mouse in a cheese factory. The ceremony began and the priest barely acknowledged that I was tied up to a chair. 
Should anyone have any objections to this union? These uh, unions speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay, uh, if no one... Stop right there, father! Rory strutted down the aisle with an army of our classmates. They came to rescue me. Even though my schoolmates treated me like an outcast, they still saw me as a part of the school. And I guess, thanks to Rory, they now treated me as a friend. They put a stop to the shotgun wedding. And you know what? I felt relief when I heard Rory's voice. I thought for sure I was a goner. That relief I felt made me realize I developed feelings for that spoiled bratty girl. If anyone's getting married today, it's me. Rory whipped out a dress, and it fit her perfectly. I agreed. If I was going to marry anyone, it would have been her. And it was. Rory made the priest stay behind, and we got married in front of our classmates. And as the triplets watched in envy and my boss cried tears of joy, I kissed my new wife. Please don't forget to share this podcast on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and so on. Thanks for your support. Check out our YouTube channel by clicking the link in this episode description. And also, kindly please rate and review this podcast by...